So on Saturday, I actually had a chance to test out a studio in King County where I'm really hoping that I can find opportunities to do some more video work like this in the future. Now, in order to do a test like this, I actually just needed some content to film. So I suggested that we test out a standard kind of three camera interview format. And then since the four initiatives in Washington state right now are one of the biggest stories this election year locally, I was hoping that I could interview Brian Haywood, who's the prime sponsor of Let's Go Washington PAC, which is the group who's actually brought us these four initiatives, as well as the guy getting demonized by the billionaire funded attack ad. That's roughly $30 million in hostile ads in our state alone just so far. Now, I've interviewed Brian Haywood before over the years. You've seen his interviews if you've watched my videos before. Those previous interviews, I'm going to link to those down below so you can go check them out. And I hope to get this perspective right now on this campaign and these initiatives. Now, fortunately, everything worked out and I was able to get the interview. So feel free to share any clips from these videos, which you actually find interesting with others. For those who actually want to see the behind the scenes kind of about this interview process, you can actually see the unedited version, which I failed to live stream. It was kind of my screw up on Saturday. It was my mistake. But you can actually see that there's no edits or teleprompters or even any notes there when you watch the whole thing. However, for easier viewing by you and for easier sharing with others, I have broken this interview into six different distinct clips. All are also linked down below if you want to view those afterwards. The following video segment is about Initiative I-2117, which it basically repeals Washington State's hidden gas tax, which is kind of dressed up as Governor Inslee's Climate Commitment Act scheme. The Let's Go Washington PAC, sponsored by Brian Haywood, promotes this under their Vote Yes, Pay Less campaign. I wanted to talk today to Brian Haywood, who is the prime sponsor of Let's Go Washington and Washington State. And if you've been seeing signs like this all over Washington State that says vote yes, pay less on I-2117, and you're wondering what exactly is this about? And you have your ballot and you see this initiative on it under this number. I thought I'd have Brian Haywood in the studio, the guy who sponsored this program, who made it happen so that we actually have this opportunity to vote on this initiative. And Brian, I uh, thought you would be able to tell our viewers today uh, exactly what is I-2117, what does it do, and why are so many billionaires and every <laughs> single big major corporation from BP to Amazon to Microsoft <laughs> and Steve Ballmer and Bill Gates and uh, Nick Hanauer and others. Why are they attacking you and why are they so angry about this initiative? They it's well, they love me, right? That's really <laughs> they're just express. That's how they express their love. I there think, we go. Uh, mad, angry uh, pamphlets and, and lots of money. Um, 2117 was pitched as a bold step for Washington state mm -hmm. to take to address uh, climate change issues. Mm -hmm. And in particular, the focus was on carbon emissions. Um, the original Climate Commitment Act. The Climate Commitment Act, right. yes. And that, that was the idea, was that this would, uh, this would go towards reducing uh, carbon output in the state. And, mm -hmm. and uh, because, and I, I think, I'm, I'm gonna editorial, I'm gonna try to be as straightforward and also editorialize at the same mm -hmm. time. I believe that they, they poll tested uh, market driven solutions is polls much better than top down state uh, dictates, right? right? Yeah, central and planning doesn't Central planning well as they it seems to, to have a bad reputation, and you can't figure out why. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, this is a market driven solution, is what they mm -hmm. claimed, because look, there's a market, we're doing these auctions. Uh, and, and maybe we can take a little bit here and just explain how the auctions work, because sure. I think that's important to understand. The, the state set up this auction plan where those who produce energy, um, and it's sort of funny, uh, Jay Inslee says, the polluters, um, they call them that. And these are people that, it, a, a country without energy is a poor country, and poor countries live in terrible, terrible environmental conditions. I, I've been to those countries. Mm -hmm. We are blessed with enormous energy, and because mm -hmm. of that, we have a much cleaner environment and much uh, better living. But, so we set up this auction, and it basically, so let's, I'm just going to make up the numbers though, but it the says, state, the state, the set, state up the set up the auction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I claim Washington residency, so I, I sort of, <laughs> we, uh, we, yeah, yeah, the yeah. we, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't do the, the auctions, <laughs> the, the, the state set up the auctions. Uh, and the auctions essentially create uh, credits mm -hmm. that you can buy at auction in order for you to um, uh, 
sell mm -hmm. uh, energy in the state, right? And all the people that are uh, in that uh, business then have to compete with each other to buy these credits. Mm -hmm. And there's a limited number of credits. Let's say the first year there's only, let's say, 100 credits. There's, I don't know how many there are, but let's say there was just 100. Everyone can buy into it. Mm -hmm. And depending on whether you think the supply, well, depending on your outlook for what's going to happen next year and the next year and how much money you have, uh, you're willing to bid up higher or lower uh, mm -hmm. on what you think other people do. And so it creates sort of a market environment. But there's a minimum price, and they charge you per ton, per ton of carbon output mm -hmm. and uh, and it's right the minimum price per ton of carbon output is $25 mm -hmm. $24 I think it is uh, and it when they put the auction in place uh, nobody knew what was going to happen and immediately the price shot up to $60 per uh, carbon ton mm -hmm. and for if you're trying to figure out well, what does that mean and how does that impact me uh, what it looks like in, in the way that pricing it was impacted is that we, we end up paying at the pump about a penny per gallon per dollar per ton. In other words, okay. if it's $60, we're going to pay 60 cents per gallon uh, for, uh, for gas. The consumer. The, the consumer, consumer will. That's, yeah, yeah. And it's roughly been that, right? We've been mm -hmm. anywhere from the, the auctions have gone between $25 and $60 per ton. And our price has been anywhere from uh, 25 cents to 50, 60 cents. Uh, per gallon. But no matter what it is, uh, no matter what that price is, um, uh, we pay more at the pump. We pay. Yeah. But it, but it, and I've called it a hidden tax because they yeah. designed it to be a hidden tax, right? right? So the original idea was we'll do this, we'll set these auctions up, and then every year we'll reduce the number of credits, right? It'll increase the price, and in theory, people will quit driving uh, fossil fuel vehicles and um, you know, we'll, we'll reduce carbon, it. right? Right. The, the problem is it doesn't take any carbon out of the atmosphere at all. Right. It hasn't done any now. Next year, when they reduce it, what it means, if 2117 is not passed, if it's rejected, mm -hmm. next year the price of gas will go up. It was mm -hmm. designed to do that. And then the next year there's fewer credits, and it'll go up again. And it's not just gas that you put in your car, but it's also your heating costs at home, because I know uh, our AG Bob Ferguson intervened and told the power companies that they weren't allowed to put a line item to tell consumers this is how much more you're paying because of the Climate Commitment Act thing. Absolutely. And I, you pay it at the gas, if you think about it, you pay it, you pay it in a couple of ways in your groceries. Right. Uh, any truck that hauls groceries to your local grocery store has to pay this hidden gas tax. Mm -hmm. that, that means the prices for transportation are up, which means the prices you pay for groceries are going to go up. Uh, cold storage. I was just up at Bellingham in the cold storage, uh, the 19th largest cold storage facility in the entire United States is up in Bellingham. Mm -hmm. uh, and their costs are going to double because of this, this uh, CCA uh, increasing the cost of electricity. They're, they were paying like three cents, uh, 3.5 cents per watt, and it's going to go up to seven. Uh, and it'll double. And, and that if they're paying it, that doesn't mean they just eat the cost. Right. They either go out of business, which makes everything more expensive, or they pass that cost on. So everything that you have in the frozen section is getting impacted there. And then it gets on a truck where it's more expensive there. It's not like this little teeny impact. Right. It's this multiplying cumulative impact that you're feeling. There's a reason when you shop and you go, man, it feels like groceries are more expensive. There's a reason, and it's not just a little bit. Right. Uh, there's a reason when you look at your electric, and I would encourage people online, one of the things I encourage people to do, go look at your electric bill and your gas bill from a year ago, compare it to this year, and uh, post it online if there's yeah. a difference. Or a couple I'd years post, even. Yeah. Look at the trend. Yeah, look at what's gone on. So what 2117 does, explain what that actually does. for our It repeals that, that whole carbon, that, that whole hidden gas tax. Okay. Repeals it. Okay. And so it, and what that does is it immediately takes $2 billion away from the government. And when I say that, though, really what it does is it stops the government from taking $2 billion of your money mm -hmm. every year. Right. Uh, one of the, the, the no, these, we can't afford it. I think one of the funny things is uh, the no on 2117 says, we can't afford it, right? Yeah. And I've been watching, uh, we can't, who, can't, who can't afford it? Well, the government can't afford to stop taking your money, right? <laughs> yeah. That's 
Yeah, they don't care if you can't afford to live. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But uh, but they don't want to stop this kind of, and I, I've often Don't stop the money train. Yeah, don't stop the money train, the gravy train, because it does, seems like they're doing a lot of kickbacks. And I think that uh, one of the uh, arguments, what's impressive here is uh, BP, mm -hmm. which is uh, British Petroleum, supposedly one of these evil uh, uh, petroleum Energy companies. Polluters. Polluters. Yeah. But once you give money to Jane's you're no longer a polluter. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. And so what happens is they're one of the biggest oppo uh, opponents of repealing uh, this, uh, this tax. And I, I find that it, so, so this is crony capitalism at its worst, right? Mm -hmm. uh, cap capitalism, for all of its faults, it can't really beat up on its competitors except through the market, unless there's regulation. Mm -hmm. And regulation, if there's big regulation that, that affects everybody, and you're a big company, if you're one of the biggest in the world, you have millions of dollars to spend on lobbyists mm -hmm. and on people to help craft the laws so they benefit you and hurt the little guy. Mm -hmm. And British Petroleum is up to its neck in doing this, right? right? Oh no, we're innocent, we didn't do anything. <laughs> we just care about the environment. No, they're trying to make profits, I mean, that they're. Just like everybody else, and I don't have any problem with them trying to make profits. Right. I do have a problem when they begin to use the mechanisms of government to benefit them, to cost the consumer, and destroy the market. And I, I believe that's what British Petroleum is doing. And so, so that's in summary, uh, when people see I-2117 on their ballot, as they should see it, I think that's the number, the second one on, the, on the ballot, yes, yeah. uh, what do they need to know? Vote yes, pay less, right? <laughs> And now where can need, they go to find more information? Uh, go to letsgowa.com. Mm -hmm. We have videos there that you can watch that'll inform it give you a history of the whole CCA and how it came about and and I think one of the things they another thing they should know is that we're not tracking how the money's being spent the state isn't the state's not thank mm -hmm. you for keep correcting me on that <laughs> <laughs> the state is not tracking how the money's being spent and whether it is effective or not and this to me is one of the things that sort of burns me the most uh, there's a, a belief that if we spend the money things will get better but if you really believed, if you really believed in your soul that this is an existential threat and, and we don't have time to waste, that we need to do this now, mm -hmm. uh, accountability would be, should be number one on your priority list. And it's not. They have no mechanism to track how that money they took from you is being spent in terms of its effectiveness for uh, helping the environment. And that's what they need to remember is that this is not being, it's not helping the environment. It's just a tax on you. And so, once again, if uh, any of our viewers want to learn more, let's go wa.com. Okay. www.letsgowa.com. Brian, thank you so much for coming in the studio today and talking about this initiative. I know they're spending tens of millions of dollars attacking it, so it's good to have at least uh, to hear right from the source what's going on with this initiative. Thank you so much.